Hello, and um, can everybody see the, the screen okay? Okay. Yes. Wonderful. Um, so, hello and welcome uh, to Adulting 101 Sewing Basics. Uh, I'm your facilitator today. I'm Christy Buchanan Wellman, and our wonderful presenter today is Sydney Markham. She's going to be showing you all the ins and outs of uh, sewing and mending. Uh, this is a virtual program today. Um, we hope at some point in the future, maybe we can get together in person, but for now it is virtual. <laughs> and um, so they'll, you know, mending uh, and alteration skills that hopefully will help you extend the life of your clothes. Um, also, just a few housekeeping overviews here for uh, Zoom info. Um, uh, whenever you, of course, come in onto the, the Zoom, everybody's automatically muted and you can unmute to uh, speak. You can also use the little um, features at the bottom if you want to for the nonverbal feedback menu, like, a, you know, raise your hand or, or wave or give a thumbs up or whatever. Um, also, you can see the participants here. You can change your name there on the listing if you want and also post questions via chat. Also in the chat window when it's up, we will um, be posting links for more information. So if you want to um, save those to a printout, we'll have all of the uh, links to all the flyers and uh, PDF copies of the slides. So if you wanna um, save that for later to print out or to store, feel free. Um, we will be recording the program today. Um, uh, we'll, we're also repeating this program in October and we'll take the best one of the two to post online on the library's digital branch page. Um, it may also be posted to the library's YouTube channel. Um, when the recording uh, begins, you'll see the recording symbol at the top. I believe I've already started it up there so you can see it like, looks like a little red recording symbol. Um, if you do not want to be recorded, you can leave and watch at a later time, but we, we don't know when it'll be posted. Um, also, you could mute your microphone or turn off your camera, which is stop video, or you could change your login name to something nondescript. But we really encourage you to uh, participate because that's part of what makes the Zoom program a community program and also just for feedback on the techniques that Sydney will be offering today. Um, if you know of someone that would like to take this program who missed this time, we will be offering it again on Wednesday, October 20th. Feel free to uh, sign up at the library's ca online calendar. And with that, thank you for your support of the library and um, Independence Regional Library, where we're coming from. And with that, um, I'll uh, step out of the way and let Cindy take over <laughs> as our Thanks. presenter. <laughs> Thanks, Christy. <laughs> All right, I think, Christy, are you pulling up slides? Okay. So as uh, she's pulling those up, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. Oh, you want me to share the slides? Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I thought... <laughs> That's okay. I can, I can pull it up. No problem. Let's see here. I've got to close out of some things here. I thought you were. I thought you were going to be doing. <laughs> no, oh all God. good. First program. Yes. Um, I do have them right here. I just. You, um, let's see. I thought you might want control over doing that versus That's doing the demonstrations. Point. All right. Good thing I have it pulled up already. Let me make sure I have it in present mode. There we go. Okay. So, thank you everybody for coming. This is Adulting 101 Sewing Basics. So the skills we'll be learning today are really intended for repairing and altering clothing. Um, they're meant to be very useful, things you can use in your everyday life. And um, if you are an advanced sewist, this might not be the best program for you, but I'm excited to see everybody's skill levels. And if we have any great suggestions or feedback, um, please throw them out there. So um, I work as a library assistant at Independence Regional Library. If you've never visited us, we are over on the east side, right across the street from East Mecklenburg High. 
I have been sewing for 10 years. Um, I learned when I was in high school, I was actually lucky enough to take four years of a sewing course. Um, I mostly sew on the machine just because it's faster, um, a little bit more reliable than maybe your eyesight and your hands. And I mostly enjoy sewing clothing, but I dabble in a little bit of embroidery and quilting every now and then. Um, today, in honor of our program, I am wearing, wearing a me made outfit, um, which you can see is the jumpsuit in the bottom right picture. Um, it's a great feeling getting to use something that you've made with your own hands. So I hope that you can take these skills and kind of explore after our program. So if you picked up a kit from our library, you should already have a needle, very hard to see, um, and a little kit with a few different colors of thread as well as two buttons in it. And you will need fabric. You should have in the kit, there were two pieces, just small squares. Um, if you weren't able to pick up a kit, that's not an issue as long as you have a needle, thread, scissors, and something to actually sew on. So the first thing we're going to be learning is sewing a button. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and stop sharing because it's much easier for me to show you up close rather than just reading directions off a slide. So if everybody could go ahead and get their needle, and I'm going to tip the camera down just so you can see my hand. It's a little bit easier. Okay, so first thing you need is to get your needle and choose whatever color thread. I'm going to be using um, the black button and um, a contrasting thread, so I'm going to do green, just so it's a little bit easier for you to see. If you were ever repairing clothes at home, you would probably want to choose a thread that matched the color of the fabric or the button that you were using. So you can go ahead and pick whatever color you'd like. I recommend you cut a piece of thread that's about, um, I would say about 10 inches long, 10 to 12 inches. And once you have your thread cut, there, were, there should have been two needles in your kit. One would have been inside the plastic with the thread. Um, those ones are a little bit smaller. Um, we really struggled to get them threaded, so I recommend you use the larger needle that would have been pinned to your fabric. So the, really the easiest way to do this is just get a clean edge on that thread. If you would like to, you can lick the end. Um, it makes it a little bit stiffer and a little bit easier. And the needle eye should be large enough where you can just gently push it through. And once it's through, you'll want to pinch on the other side and pull to where your threads are about halfway. All right. And if you have any questions or you're struggling, please feel free to come off mute or raise a hand. I want to wait until everybody has a threaded needle until we move on to the next step. And if you don't feel like coming off mute, if you could just hold your needle up to the camera, that way I could kind of see. I see Chelsea's ready. Stella, are you doing all right? Okay, good. Are you okay, Stella? We just can't see your needle. <laughs> I'm watching because if I do that at the same time, I won't be able to pay attention. So oh. I'm going to watch. Oh, perfect. Right. No worries. Pay attention. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and good thing it'll be recorded so you can look back on another time and do it yourself. Okay, so then, you. okay. If I see, I see Chelsea's ready. So we need to take one end of the needle or one end of the thread. You want to make sure that one is about three or four inches longer. I know it's a little hard to see, um, 
but one will be about three or four inches longer. And so that longer end is the one that we're going to tie a knot. So you're just going to tie a knot the same way you would tie your shoes. And it doesn't matter if you can't get it quite at the end, as long as it's about within an inch of the end. It makes it a little bit easier. And then I usually try to tie a second knot right about the same spot, just so it's a little bit sturdier and you don't have to worry about pulling your knot through if the needle's too big. Okay. So I have my knot tied at the end. Chelsea, are you doing good? Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and take one of our buttons and one of our pieces of fabric. So I recommend that you fold the fabric just about half an inch down and we sew through two uh, layers of fabric because typically when you would be sewing a button on a sweater or something, it's a little bit thicker there because they'll use a stabilizer just so you know, you're pulling on your buttons all the time and you don't want it to pop off. And it'll also be a little bit easier if you have slightly thicker fabric. So again, just hold it down about half an inch. This fabric's really thin, so if you kind of just pinch it along the edge, it'll actually crease. You don't need an iron or anything like that. So once you have it folded, you're gonna wanna take the button and kind of pinch it there with um, whichever hand is not your dominant. So I'm right-handed, so I'll be holding the button with my left and using my needle and thread with my right. Now we're going to pinch and turn it over and we're gonna push the needle through and you wanna make sure that it goes through any one of the buttonholes. For the first one, it really doesn't matter. So you can see there, I have my needle going through the buttonhole. You go ahead and pull all the way through where it is loosely attached. I'm just holding that up by the thread. So now, we need to put it in the diagonal hole. And for the first one, you're pushing down back through. You actually don't want to pull it too tight because when you're sewing a button on, it still has to be able to get through the button hole. So you want the tiniest bit of space, but it's okay if it's a little loose. And once you have that second stitch through, you can see just slightly, there's the green. We're going to go back up through the wrong side of the fabric and we're going right where we did that initial stitch where that knot is. Up where the knot is through that first hole and this time you can pull it a little bit tighter. Then we're going back down through that same hole we're going to do this about three or four times and then we're going to change which two holes we're going through. Some buttons actually only have two holes. Um, so if that were the case, this would be even quicker. And once you have it down again, you want to push the needle back up. And the more time you do it, the easier it is because that button's going to stop moving around so much. And your stitches are going to be in about the same place. I'm coming to my third time and I'm going to do it one more time. Make sure it's really stable. And then back down. Once you have it about three or four times, we'll go ahead and switch over to the other set of holes. Um, Estella, did you have a question? I saw you came off mute. Yeah, I have a question. Did mm -hmm. you, just so that I'm clear, when you first set up the knot for the thread, tie yeah. the knot, the double knot, did you say you just tie a, make a knot, make the two knots on one end of the thread, not the other end? 
Is that what you say? Yeah. Because how it goes through the needle. Now, yeah. why is that? Why? Because most of the times when I sew, I would tie a knot. I would make a knot on both both threads that hang down from the eye of the needle. That's but why? Question. Why did you only do one? So um, that that one would be an open end. That basically. <laughs> Yes, um, it is um, when we, we actually have one skill that we will do a double knot the way. So what she's talking about is the way we have two loose ends on either side of our needle. Um, you can tie both ends together instead of tying a knot at just one end. I do one knot because it gives you a lot more thread to work with. So sometimes you want it doubled up because um, like, for example, later, if we have time for it, we'll be doing kind of like this, where you would repair almost like embroidery and you want it thicker to really hold that fold together. But for um, a scale we'll be doing later, which is um, fixing a hem, you want something really delicate. Um, so truthfully for the button, you could do both ends tied together. Um, it's really about personal preference. And I know these kits didn't come with the most thread. Um, <laughs> So we're trying to be <laughs> resourceful, but if you have lots of thread, please feel free to tie both ends together because I know that can be a lot easier, especially. Um, okay. Thank you, that is a great question. <laughs> thank okay. you. So now that we understand why I did that, we're gonna go back to um, finishing up our button. And if you need me at any point to adjust my camera, please let me know. It is a little tricky for me to see, but I am trying my best. So we should have about four stitches on the one diagonal. So now on the wrong side of our fabric, we're going to just go a little bit over from where we have that back and forth and we'll poke up and it should come right into the other buttonhole. So again, we're doing the same thing, just going up through one side, down through the other, pulling the thread all the way through and then going up again. So once you have this skill, it's really just knowing how to thread your needle, how to tie your knots, and once we get to the end of this button, how to tie off so that it stays secure. So again, once you do this about three or four times, we will be almost ready to knot off our button. So I've just finished up and I have both or all four of the buttonholes secured. I can pull it up from the fabric a little bit, but it's secured. I'm going to give everybody just a second before we talk about tying off our working thread. When you finish, you'll see that we have a lot of crisscross stitches at the back. And I'm gonna go ahead and wait. I see Chelsea stitching. I'm gonna wait for her to let me know. Are you doing okay? Okay. So once you have your button secured, we're gonna be looking at the wrong side of the fabric, which is where you see all the knots and the thread and it doesn't look as pretty. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take our needle and we're going to go under those threads that we've just sewn. We don't really need to go into the fabric and it would be a little hard to get into the fabric anyway because of all that thread. So you want to go through once, pull it all the way through, and then going through again. 
So the same skill we just practiced of pushing your needle through, we're doing on the back side now, and we're tying a knot. About twice. And then when you have your needle through the stitches about halfway, you're going to take your working thread and pull it, I know this might be a little hard to see on the camera, but you're going to pull it around the needle. So instead of just pushing the needle through the, um, the stitches at the back, now we're taking our working thread and wrapping it around the needle. And then we're gonna take our needle and push it through. So we're really tying a knot. Just like that. And when you pull it all the way through, it tightens. And again, this is personal choice. You could do this once, you could do this three times. It really matters, um, you know, just how secure you want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and do two knots. And once you have that knotted, you can take your scissors and trim it off. So there is our first skill. We have the button sewed on and we have it secured at the back. The way we secured this, uh, those stitches where we just went through previous stitches and then looped our working thread around the edge of the needle, um, that's how we're gonna bind off all of our sewing projects. Um, it's really just tying a knot at the end so that your work doesn't come undone. Now our next item we'll be doing is um, we're going to learn the back stitch, which is mostly used. So I have a sample here. You can see I have these two pieces of fabric and when I pull, they don't come apart. This is a hand stitch. Um, the way you do it is you go up and then you go down and then you go halfway up. So you're really doing almost a double stitch. So it's pretty strong. And truthfully, if you wanted to make your own clothing but don't have a sewing machine, you could use this. It would take you a long time, but it would be just as sturdy as a sewing machine. And this is really useful if you have a seam at your, like the edge of your pants has come undone and you wanna fix it. Or if, um, you know, maybe uh, you bought something at the store and it's a little bit too loose, so you wanted to take it in a few inches at the waist, um, this is the stitch that you would use for that. So now we're going to take our two pieces of fabric and we want to use the short side. Just like this. Okay. You see, I have my fabric. Um, my button is stitched there. Don't worry about that. It won't interfere at all with what we're doing next. And if you wanted to, you could fold a small line, maybe a quarter to a half an inch, just to guide you as we're sewing, because we want to try to sew in a straight line, um, as if we were stitching a seam right up the side of the pant leg. So I'm just going to fold mine a little bit, just as a guiding line. If you had a ruler and a pencil or a pen, you could do this as well. And once you have that folded, we need to get our needle and thread. Um, for this, you're gonna want a little bit of a longer piece of thread. So I don't have quite enough left. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut myself a new piece. If you have at least eight to 10 inches left over, that'll be perfect. Cause right now we're really just practicing these stitches. And if you ever needed to make permanent repairs, you would want to uh, use as much thread as possible. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to be using my black thread. So again, um, of course I have white thread and if I were using that, you wouldn't even be able to tell it was there. But hopefully the black will be a little bit easier for you to see. I'm going to cut a piece of thread that's about a foot and a half to two feet long. But I have a have question. It, yes. Absolutely. Uh, so, I, just so that I understand it, you have two separate, there's two pieces of fabric, you're trying to sew them together, is that it? 
Yes, ma'am. So the way, same way, um, you know, on the side of your pants, those were two pieces of fabric sewed together. Like for this one on my sample, it was two separate pieces of fabric. And then I joined them right here. So when you open it up, it looks like a regular okay. seam. Got it. Thank you. And of course, if you had a pair of, you know, any clothing item that you wanted to fix a seam on, you could be practicing on that. And that's what I do when I have my own repairs that I need to make at home. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw my needle quickly. And again, this one, you could um, tie both ends together or you could tie one end. This is up to you. Um, two ends could make it stronger, it might make it easier as well. I'm still gonna use one just because I don't have the most thread right now. I have my thread double knotted towards the end. And if you tie both pieces of string together, you probably don't need to double knot because it'll be enough. You really just want it to be thicker than the needle. Okay. All right. Looks like everybody has their needle threaded. I'm going to go ahead and tilt my camera down again so you can see what I'm doing with my hands. Um, please come off mute if you have questions because it's a little hard for me to see the screen. So we're going to go on the side where we had a slight fold or some pencil markings if you have that available. And the first thing we do is just take our needle the same way we did with the buttons and you're going to push up through both layers of fabric and pull all the way through till the knot catches. Now we're going to take our needle and we're going to do, I would say about, for practicing, you could do about a quarter of an inch. Um, the better you get at this stitch, you could do even smaller and it will be more secure. But for right now, just worry about getting the motions down. This is obviously a sample. So once you have that through on the wrong side of our fabric, we're gonna go about halfway in between where we have the knot and where we just pulled our fabric or where we pulled the thread through. And we're gonna go halfway in between and push back up again. So this is creating almost a double stitch. It, that's why it's called the back stitch because you're going back to where you just push the needle through. And then again, about quarter of an inch from there, you're gonna push the needle back down, pull all the way through, and then you can flip it around to the side. And you're really kind of going to the middle point of each of these stitches so that it's kind of seamless, but also very strong. And I would like us to try to get at least an inch so that you can kind of see what it's like when you try to pull the fabric apart and it actually holds together. Again, I'm just going about a quarter of an inch, turning my fabric over, and then going right where I had that last stitch and pushing it back up through. So on one side of your fabric, you'll see kind of these overlapping stitches but then on the other side, it actually looks pretty neat, the same way you would in your store-bought clothing. So there's really no overlapping. You just, when you go on the right side of the thread, there's this, when you have to, you, you go there, mm -hmm. but there's really no thread there. But yeah. when you come back to the wrong side of the fabric, you're just going back to where you end last thread. Is that right? Yes, that's um, exactly it. So okay. it really looks like. Like a continuous thing. thread. Yes, it looks like these tiny stitches. This side, you can see there's a little bit more because that's where we're doing our um, uh, the back stitching. 
So it'll be a double layer, but then on the right side, we see those, like you said, it looks like it's just one clean line, especially the better you get at this, it'll look pretty much seamless. So I'm gonna do just a few more so I can show you and then answer any questions. Um, maybe even if somebody wants to, I think Chelsea might be the only one sewing along, but if Chelsea feels comfortable sharing, um, she could always show what she has. Okay, so now I have about an inch, inch and a half sewn, and you can see that it really looks seamless. On this side, it looks a little bit thicker, but that's okay because that's gonna be the inside of your clothes anyway. And what you really want is the strength so that when you pull it, it's not gonna break. And that it, these two pieces of fabric are sewn together the same way you would on a machine. So again, there's no overlapping on the thread. It's just gonna look like it's a continuous stitch. Is that right? Yes, that's exactly okay. what this is. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So it's almost, oh gosh, it might not be the best quality, but they're little, maybe an eighth of an inch, tiny little stitches. Because um, the smaller they are, the stronger the, the seam is going to be. Okay. I see Chelsea working. Um, like I said, you can practice this more, of course, off camera, and we'll have a video recording eventually. So this is a, um, a stitch you can come back to, especially as you find clothes that you want to repair or alter at home. And it's kind of relaxing once you get the hang of it. And when you get the hang of it, you can even see the way I am right now. I'm just holding one side of the fabric up and poking my needle. Because the more you do this, the more you'll understand where your hand and where your needle are at. And it'll kind of come in a straight line without even trying. Okay. That's so, it's so clever because when I try to sew, I always thought it's so hard because some thread, some stitch will be longer and some stitches will be short. And I have a boy in between that are so uneven. Thank you. That That yes, is good. Of course. No, this is one of the best stitches. This is, I actually learned to hand sew when I was about eight. Um, I didn't do anything big, just little purses. Um, and this is still really nice. Even though I like to use the sewing machine, there are small details or small repairs when it's just so much easier. And yeah, this one, again, it's called the back stitch. Um, Christy will share all sorts of wonderful infographics and resources that we put together. Um, so that way, until this recording is online, you can kind of look back at those resources um, and hopefully it'll answer any questions you have. Okay. So, now, I want to see, Chelsea, how are you doing? Is it, you have about an inch? Yeah, it's good. Initially, I was um, oh, yeah. way too far apart, but then <laughs> at the end, it got a little better, and then I yeah. ended up knotting the thread in the middle, but, um, <laughs> but it's getting there. <laughs> I see that. No, that's one of those things, I mean, when you first start, there's going to be gaps. It's going to be uneven. Um, your thread is going to not. That's why, um, of course, you know, if you were doing a full dress or something, you would not be sewing with like 30 feet of string. You would be like two and a half feet and then just tying a knot and starting again because that is how you can get knotted. Um, that's why it's also important when you finish up the stitch to pull the thread all the way through because that's sometimes why it gets knotted because you'll accidentally push into thread um, that is um, not pulled all the way through. Okay. All right. Now for feeling okay with that, I have one, maybe two more skills that I'd like to cover. 
So again, you can either leave this thread loose if it's something you want to come back to, or you can bind off the way I showed earlier. Excuse my fingers in the camera. And with this one, it might actually be good to pull a little bit of the fabric into the knot. So it's almost like making a tiny little stitch at the end. Again, you want to put your needle about halfway through, and then you're going to grab your loose thread and loop around the needle because this is making a knot. Otherwise, you're just doing one more stitch. But this is creating a knot. So I'm going to do it again. You'll go make a tiny little stitch right at the end. And it won't matter on the clothing because it'll be in line with the stitches that you've already done. Looping, looping that thread around our needle tip and pushing the needle all the way through, pulling that thread so it's tight. So do you actually take into the fabric for uh, when you do this knot or do you just gonna go underneath the last thread or last stitch if I will? For the back stitch, I will go under into the fabric. Um, I think it's a little bit more secure. And if you'll see, I just did the tiniest stitches right at the end there. So it won't even be noticeable when you open up your seam because it's just going to be like two tiny extra stitches right where you already had them. And that way there's a, a knot in the, the uh, fabric. So it's a little bit more secure than just knotting onto the, um, onto the thread that you've been working with. Right. With the buttonhole, it's a little different just because we've gone over the same area about eight times with thread. Um, but this is different because you really only go over the area once. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my thread. Um, I actually have enough thread left on my needle that I don't need to thread it again, which is nice. But of course, if you need to take the time to get a little more thread on there, please do. We will wait for you. Again, I'm tying. For this next stitch, we are going to be doing, it's actually called the slip stitch. I know this is a little hard to see, but you actually shouldn't be able to see anything. So this is how a hem would look. And it's so, I did this with a green, green thread. You might be able to see a little bit there, but you really shouldn't be able to see it all on the right side of the fabric. So your clothing, that is, you know, the side that's facing out towards everybody, you actually won't be able to see. That's why with this one, it is important that you use just the one strand with one knot on the end instead of two um, tied together. Okay, I'm just finishing up my second knot here. And then we're gonna go back to our two pieces of fabric. So the way we have these set up, you can see we have our two pieces sewn together now as if it were a um, the seam on the side of your pants or your t-shirt. And now we're going to use the other end, instead of the one where we have the button, we're going to use this shorter end. The same way we did with the button, you're going to want to fold it um, anywhere from a quarter to a half an inch. I'm going to do about somewhere in between that. So if you are a machine sewist, um, five eighths of an inch is the standard seam allowance. So that's where you would line up your fabric on your sewing machine, but most of us don't. Five eighths is just kind of a nothing number. So I have my fabric folded over and then you want to fold it over one more time because if this were a hem, you wouldn't want loose ends. You wouldn't want the raw edge the way we did here. You don't want that showing. You want it tucked away so that your pants don't fray and fall away. So again, this fabric is really thin, so you can just kind of press it with your fingers. Of course, if you were doing this at home and you wanted to repair um, some clothing, you, you could probably use an iron and that would be really helpful. 
But for now, we don't need that because we're just practicing skills. So once we have our fabric folded over like that twice, we're going to be practicing the slip stitch. So this one is going to take a little bit more practice, um, but it is one of the most useful stitches because you barely notice it's there. So this might be a little bit difficult to see, but I'm gonna try my best. The white background isn't the best with white fabric, but you're going to go in between those folded edges of the fabric. So almost like this was a burrito and you're going in between, you wanna catch your needle right on that fold up at the top but you want the knot to be inside so that it's not showing anywhere. So you would have folded with your needle inside, only poking through the fold. We're not going through all three layers of the fabric. You're not going out to the front. You're just going through the folded part up through. And once you pull it, you'll be able to see that you, there is no knot visible because it's hidden in between the folded layers of your fabric. So once we have that, also if you have um, pins at home, I don't have any with me now, of course I have some at home. Um, you, it's really helpful if you pin things down because then it's not gonna flap around like that. But for now, that's okay. So a slip stitch is really just taking the tiniest amount of fabric, like truly two to three strands, and you're just barely catching them. And we're going to go right at the top of that fold, just to where it meets the edge of our, um, the right side of the fabric where it would be facing out when you're wearing your clothing. And you're going to do the tiniest stitch. It might be hard to see, but it's truly about two pieces of thread that I have wrapped around and caught on my needle. So when I pull that through, you really can't see it on the other side. Because I'm using black thread on white fabric, you might be able to see almost a small dot. So now that we have that tiny, tiny stitch, we're going to take our needle and we're going to go in between the folds, almost like you're going down about, gosh, an eighth of an inch. And then you're pushing the needle up again. Most of our stitches are going to be right along the fold line. So you're pushing up right through the fold. And then we're going to go again, I would say about a quarter of an inch over. We're going through the right side of the fabric. So the one layer that will actually be facing out. And again, we're grabbing about three stitches, three to four. Excuse me, my thread came undone. So this one, of course, if you were doing this on a pair of pants or a skirt, you would wanna try to match your thread as closely as possible. Um, because most hems, I mean, some of course have a visible stitch, but this is kind of like if you were doing, if you were fixing dress pants, um, you can't typically see where the thread is. So now that we um, have caught those like three to four little, little stitches, little pieces of that fabric, you go ahead and pull it through again. So most of these stitches are kind of just running along the top edge of that fold. Once you have that, you go back down, again about an eighth of an inch. You'll push your needle through that first layer of fabric in the fold and then up at the crease.
So it's creating really, really delicate stitches that once you have them all finished, it's actually much sturdier than you would think. So catch a few right along the top, pull it all the way through, go in between the layers, push through the first layer, and then catch right, yep, yeah, here we go, right at the top of the crease. That part can take a little bit of practice. Back through. And again, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to come off mute. Um, if anybody wants me to just hold up I, it's a little tricky to know how clear it is. So when you thread, uh, so you stick down through the fabric, then you yes. come up through the fold. Is that right? Is yes. That so okay. I'm gonna tilt this up so I can see and try to use my sweater as a darker backdrop. Okay. So the way um, I'm coming into the fold is almost like right there. That's the fold. So I'm going into, into the third layer, the mat, that middle layer of the fabric. And then the needle comes out right there. So Wait, but, uh, but you can just go, you have to, I mean, it can be just through that fold. It has to, the needle had to go into that, that long piece of fabric first, don't, yes. doesn't it? Okay. Yeah, it's so it's like the middle layer. So where we folded it initially, and it was, you know, the raw edge, and then we folded it once. So we're going, we're sewing on that, um, like you said, the long piece with the raw edge. Um, so that that way, all the stitches are kind of wrapped in between our two layers of fabric that are actually going to be facing out or facing us. And they're kind of hidden. So then when you go onto that piece of fabric that we folded over one time, you come out right at the top of the fold. And that's what lets you tie these pieces together without it being visible. So if you can see yes. those tiny, about a quarter of an inch apart. Right. And then again, when we're catching our thread up at the top, you really are going for about three to four, three to four little pieces of fabric on that needle. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, this side that has been facing us, that's the inside of the, of the fabric. The white yeah. side of the fabric is facing you, is that right? Yes, so the inside of our, of our fabric, you can see where it's folded up. That's what we're sewing on. So really, the only time we're even touching the uh, the right side, the one that would face out, is when mm -hmm. we pull those like three to four stitches. It's really like, you can't even say it's an eighth of an inch because it's so tiny, but it's just right. enough to where the thread is catching. Um, and again, this would be, this is really nice when I do dress pants. Um, so it's really delicate and it looks professional. Um, of course, you could also use our back stitch if you wanted something visible, the same way we talked. Um, Estella, as Estella mentioned, it looks like you're just doing one long stitch. So if you ever, like, the clothes I'm wearing right now, they don't have a, a slip stitch hem. It's just a regular back stitch. And most of our casual wear um, is like that. So again, you would go catch about three to four stitches. Push right up through the fold and then pull through. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there with that skill. I know we only have a few more minutes left. Um, I know, I believe we also had someone come in. Um, I didn't know if they wanted to ask any questions. I know they caught the tail end, but Christy had mentioned that this will eventually be um, posted on the library's YouTube page. And of course, we're sharing resources that can help you along until that video gets posted. Um, so I am going to tie off just while everybody's 
finishing up, maybe thinking of questions. And again, you would do catching the tiniest bit of fabric on that fold, looping our thread around, and then pulling the needle all the way through so that you just tied a knot. And I did post in the chat window um, the links to all the handouts that came with the kits and also a copy of the slides you're seeing today. So that's posted in the chat window. There's a link for that with a folder. And also uh, Sydney's Sewing Basics suggested reading list that's available on the library's catalog. So you can click that link and directly request some materials to come to your favorite branch location. Yeah, that one, there's also, there's a lot of great books, um, ebooks, as well as two websites that had really detailed instructions and videos of these, um, these hand stitches and a few others. So if you want to practice at home until we can get that YouTube video up and see really kind of step-by-step -step photos, um, that'll be up there for y'all. Be and, nice if you teach uh, sewing on the machine. City. I know. I want to see. Um, do, do you have a sewing machine, Estella? Yes, I do. In fact, two of them. Oh. <laughs> not, I know. That I know, oh. not that I know how to use them well, but I have two ready to learn. <laughs> I would love to teach that. Um, I think Christy and I will have to see how much interest there is in that. We started with this just so that everybody could join, but I would not be... Um, not be opposed to doing a regular sewing program, um, especially learning things like how to make a bag, how to make a mask, um, just little yes. simple sewing projects. Yes. And then also we could even cover doing repairs on a sewing machine because that can be a lot faster. Um, sign, sign me up, Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we know we have one. <laughs> That's great to know. Okay, um, with our last couple of minutes, I just wanna check in and see how everybody who is sewing along is doing. Um, I do not expect you to have this down the first time, especially a slip stitch. Um, again, I've been sewing for 10 years, hand sewing for a little bit more than that. So it, it takes a practice. But if yours looks even something remotely like that, yeah, Chelsea's got it. See? And you can't even tell, like, that's the best part about hand sewing is it's so delicate and it's really nice for doing small repairs and some of the detail work on maybe nicer pieces of clothing. Okay. So we've got our button, our back stitch that is strong and can't come apart. And we've got our slip stitch hem that you really can't even tell is there. And those are the skills I had for us today. Um, those are some of the simplest and most useful hand sewing skills you can really come by because it'll let you alter your clothing, fix any seams that are coming undone. Maybe if you found something that you love but it's not in your size, you can take in those seams a little bit. Um, and it's really a skill that not, not too many people have these days. So thank you all for coming. I'm really happy that I got to share um, my passion for sewing with y'all. <laughs>